Hey, John Carhill here from Ebtide Tackle, back for Tackle Talk. Um, today, we're going to chat about um, rigging up your GT lures um, to get the best performance out of them so that they swim properly, um, so that you get a good hookup. Um, might depend on the size of the fish, what we call a good hookup. Um, different ways to rig them to get uh, um, compliance, perhaps with certain charters that have a single hook policy only. Uh, we'll talk about barbs and um, a few of my thoughts and experiences along the way. First thing I want to cover off is barbs on hooks, um, well, especially GT hooks. Um, barbs were designed to either keep bait on a hook or perhaps to keep help keep a fish attached if we got a loose line. Um, in uh, modern GT casting, um, barbs are pretty much a no-no. Um, Two main reasons for that. One is to look after the fish themselves. Um, GTs are, depending on where you live, you know, 99% of catch and release species. Um, certainly not if you're on Hawaii or, or some other parts of the world where they um, love to eat them and that's their choice. But um, by and large, they're released. So barbs do a heap of damage to a fish's mouth. So uh, pretty good idea to crush those barbs down or buy barbless hooks just to look after the fish. Um, if you're going to release it, going to release it, you want it in good health, yeah. Um, the second thing is um, looking after your fellow angler. Um, when you consider that you're casting massive lures, you know, a couple hundred grams of lure, add on 30 or 40 grams of hooks and rings, piffing it as hard as you can. If you get those hooks into a fellow angler, uh, it's going to be a devastating injury. Add barbs to that driving those in deep into the flesh and skin. No one's a winner there. So um, I think we owe it to each other um, if we're casting in company of others to do the socially right thing and remove barbs anyway. A lot of boats have a no barb policy um, and a lot of boats have a um, no treble policy as well. Trebles do their own um, damage too at times for sure. Any hook can at the end of the day. Um, but so, yeah, buy barbless if you can, or if your favourite hook doesn't come without a barb, remove it. Uh, making hooks barbless that otherwise have one. Um, I used to dremel off the barbs off my hooks. Um, you had to go quite slow so that the hook didn't get too hot, um, which has um, a definite possibility of interfering with the heat treatment that the hook's already gone through. Um, and even though I used to go slowly, um, what I have noticed is that very quickly, the moment you have um, uh, dremeled and you use the hook in salt water, it rusts where you've removed um, uh, the, the metal. Um, I don't know whether it's going to focus on there and show, show that. Yeah, it's, it's still nice and smooth, but it's all rusty. And uh, rust, in my experience, usually ends up with hook snapping in the long run. So I reverted to um, crushing. Trusty HPA pliers did an okay job actually using not this part of the um, uh, the pliers, but in fact here behind the handle, getting more crushing power in there. But if I'm doing them at home, I grab out the um, trusty uh, crimping pliers um, to do the job, and they do it really well. Um, have I got one here to crush? Yes, I do. Um, it's a jigging master, I think it's a 7 0 jigging hook. Um, so, crimping pliers might take a go or two to get it in the right spot. No, pretty much got it first time. Barb gone, flattened. So, whether it's a fish or your own skin. Um, popping that in or out is going to be a hell of a lot easier than with that still on it. Um, I put a 9 Kadako through my finger on my last trip in Oman. I knew it was going to happen one day. And uh, I was amazed at how easy it just slid back out and then the blood flowed. But um, way better than if there was a barb in that. That would have almost certainly meant a trip back to the mainland and a whole lost day's fishing. Um, so trebles, GT, Gamma Katsu, GT recorders, uh, my treble of choice, um, 7.0 here, um, and the beauty is that they come barbless.
Hey, hook choice for your actual GT lures. Um, not as simple as you first might think. There's a bunch of considerations. Um, there's uh, the whole balance of the lure. Um, you know, a short lure, relatively short lure like a Kibera, um, you'll probably set up quite differently to uh, a longish lure like this um, Attic Viking. Um, just to get the balance right, to make sure it swims properly, it still holds in the water. Um, and then add into that stick baits. Much more complex, um, particularly uh, floating stick baits, which I spoke about in um, uh, the last tutorial on lure choice, um, can be quite fussy. Um, they're quite finely tuned and some will accept single hooks. Others really need um, the balance and drag of treble through the water to get the lure to swim. Um, how are you going to know that? Um, I guess some general advice from people in the know about which lure will take which hooks. Nothing beats getting your lures and going down to the local harbour or perhaps something with a bit more rough water and testing them out and trying them before your trip. Um, a lot of confidence can be taken in going on your trip and knowing, yep, I need to grab those hooks for that lure and it's got to swim a treat rather than being disappointed in the performance of a lure and um, trying to work that out when you're in the middle of uh, trying to catch actual fish. Hook choice, singles or trebles. Um, in the situation where um, it's a tough bite, got a limited amount of time on the water, really want to catch a fish, um, want to make the most of every opportunity, um, I'll go trebles. Um, there's six hook points there. Fish can come from any different angle, take it any way, and there is a chance one of those will find something, either on the outside or the inside of the mouth. So that's my general thinking around um, getting a bite and making it stick. If things are perhaps a little bit more um, uh, predictable, you know, the bite's good, um, or we're talking about um, monster fish, fish that you want to get a big gape around a jawbone, um, you want to get a, a real deep penetration into a hard part of the mouth, you're looking at big single hooks. Um, my favourite single hooks are these bad boys, Shakadakos, i um, been using them for years. Um, they have served me really, really well, two models. So the normal Kadako with just an offset eye and the ring Kadako which has the offset eye and a solid ring and I'll speak a little bit more about how they come into play later. Um, they're barbed so you do need to crush it down. Um, they've served me very, very well. Um, and not just me, guys all around the world have used them. Um, the downside of using a single is you just might miss that bite, um, not get that hook up that you know, might be that one on the um, thousand fish. Um, tough one to call isn't it? Uh, whether to use it or not use it. Um, I often um, look at it this way, if I get a point in I'll probably get the fish. Whereas if you get a point in with the treble you know they're prone to opening, they're prone to bending. Um, anything can shake out, we know that, but it's a little bit less likely to shake out with a big kick ass single into a big uh, bony part or around a jaw, uh, jaw hinge. It's kind of what I call monster rigging when you um, go at it with uh, big singles. Um, you're going out with an intent and an attitude to catch big fish. Um, and uh, that can work pretty well. So a little bit about the, um, the ringed Kadakos um, versus the normal Kadakos. So um, a uh, little here, um, it's an Amagari and it's got traditional eyelets where they're um, orientated vertically on the lure, excuse me. This is where a um, ring Kadako comes into play beautifully. Um, by virtue of, I don't need to use double split rings to get a hook orientation that's either up or down, whatever your preference is. Um, if this was a um, an unringed hook, I'd have to use either double split rings or be happy with the, the, um, the hook sitting off to the side, which I'm not terribly wrapped with. Um, so that's uh, vertical orientation of the, uh, the um, attachment point on the lure versus uh, I've got an Orion GTX here 
which are orientated horizontally, as you can see. So with this, I don't need to do uh, use a ring Kodako or add anything. A little bit less hardware, one less failure point. I actually quite like this. Um, so that's where the ringed and non-ringed come into play. Um, non-ringed also, sorry, ringed also, um, a little bit the same as uh, uh, you get with a inline um, hook, uh, inline eye. Um, but uh, a lot of those have been found to be pretty unsatisfactory at the current batch anyway. So uh, that's my thoughts on ringed and unringed Kodakos or, and when to use them. Um, orientation of single hooks on your lures. Um, I used to be a bit indifferent about this. I've changed my attitude. Uh, uh, Eric from Orion Law was actually, uh, I like his thinking on this. So here we've got the, um, the hook orientated um, downwards um, as opposed to the other option of upwards, which is what I used to do. The way um, Eric explained it to me, and uh, I like his thinking, is that if we ever get slack line um, during the fight, which is uh, certainly possible to do, chances are that that, by virtue of gravity, has a chance of still staying in. Whereas if it's turned around the other way and we get a slack line, really good chance of it falling out where it might be bedded into. Simple as that. If it floats your boat to rig it up that way, go for it. I've, I did it that way for years. This is a recent change for me to rig it down. Okay, while we're talking about um, the concept of rigging for monsters, um, running a assist off the, um, the tow point and with a big single has been um, something we've seen a little bit of. Um, been a bit of it, um, I've written no boundaries. Um, I've played around with it a bit, I've used it. Um, I'm fairly confident that it, it works well in terms of hookups. Um, I know what the stats are, but in my experience, it's a very, very high percentage of GTs actually get hooked on the front, um, most forward, most hook on the, um, the lure. Um, it just goes to how they eat. Uh, yeah, have a have a look at this bite marks all over the front half of the lure. Um, the way I see it is most GTs come in and they crunch on the head. They come in and kill what they uh, have caught before they work out about swallowing it. So it's either this front uh, attachment point or perhaps an assist off the nose that um, might get the uh, the hook up rather than the tail. Um, numbers are definitely less on there. So. Um, you'll get the hookups, you'll get um, the good bites here, but um, the key is making sure that your lure can still swim with it. So if you look at a, um, an assist like this, um, uh, Shout Powerful Assist, great assist, really good, I, I love the solid ring, I really love these for jigging, you tie basically straight to the solid ring. But when you add that to the front of a lure, say it's Cabrera, um, you add in a split ring there to add to that. It starts to interfere with a lot of the front of the, the cup. And I've noticed a real decreased performance in most poppers and certainly stick baits. Not many stick baits can handle this. Um, by virtue of all this hardware at the front. So my solution to that is basically tie your own. Um, that's uh, Shap Blue Assist PE, uh, Assist Cord. And a Kodako, I think that's probably probably a 7.0. Um, so the way I would do it is quite simply, it's a doubled over um, tying method I've got there. Simply loop it through front attachment point on the lure, back over itself, quite simply like that. Just simply to reduce the amount of hardware I've got on the front of that popper. I'm still going to have my split ring off the tow point. I'm still going to have... Um, my NT swivel and then off to the leader, but I've really reduced the amount of um, interference in the front of that cup face. So if you want to do it, that's how I suggest you give it a run. Works pretty well. Um, not, as I said, not many stick baits can handle that. Um, probably a few sinking stick baits uh, certainly could, but um, not many that float. Hook balance. Um, getting our lures to still, still swim right with singles is a challenge and sometimes we, um, we want to load our, hooks up, our lures up with such big hooks 
that um, will start to affect their buoyancy and that can be a real issue with poppers and if you've got a floating stick bait that you're starting to sink. Um, might be okay, um, but you're probably starting to really dampen the action of it as well. So, um, trebles are heavy. They're heavier than singles by virtue of you got three points there. Um, if you add it all up, it weighs more. Um, I like to do this a lot. Um, a treble on the belly and a single on the rear. A lot of lures will still swim that way, um, with notable exceptions, but um, you're reducing the overall weight on that lure um, potentially sinking it, but still getting maximum hook exposure at the front of the lure, and um, you're lightening up the, the bump end. Um, here's another example. This works really well on stick baits, in my opinion. Treble in the middle, single on the rear. Righto, other options. Um, baker rigs. Don't see baker rigs used too much these days. A um, few probably old timers stick to them. Um, but it's a little bit less popular. Baker rigs are just basically two singles on one split ring attached back to back. Um, it takes a, a hook with a non-offset eye for it to work. It does not work with Kadakos. Um, here's a couple of Jigging Master um, jigging hooks I've got here. You see with the offset, if I put a split ring through that, they, they're just going to sit funny. Um, they're not going to sit well. Um, especially when you add your cable tie or shrink wrap to it, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, these are small hooks. These are um, Hayabusa live bait hooks. Bloody good hooks, Hayabusa. Um, they are um, a non-offset, being a live bait hook, and you'll see there that they actually sit beautifully back to back. And if you're going to do a baker rig, you need that to occur. Um, all that's left to do there, other than make the, these barbless, is to apply either heat shrink over the shank or a cable tie. Um, I actually prefer a cable tie because it can be repositioned and reused whereas heat shrink gets uh, mangled up pretty quick. The whole idea of a baker rig is that you get um, two hook points rather than one and not as devastating as, um, as a treble which it can be pretty hard on fish's mouth, especially tuna. Um, uh, so you get the two hook points but with the cable tie or the heat shrink, uh, often the one hook will either break away or pull to the side. So you end up with just one hook point holding it, um, less damage to the fish. Um, manufacturer a couple of years ago decided, I oh, know I've got the perfect solution, I'll weld them together and make a back-to-back -back hook. Might as well have a treble in that case. The whole idea of a baker rig was actually that they could swing apart and just have the one hook point in. To be honest, not that popular these days, um, but if it works for you, give it a try. Uh, one other thing I want to talk to you about is looking after your hooks. They're a significant investment. Um, it's nothing worse than coming home from a trip and uh, you think you've cared for them, you've rinsed them in salt water, uh, sorry, fresh water, you put them away and you drag them out for your next trip and they're just a rusted mess. Um, rusted hooks break, in my opinion, and, and uh, I've seen it happen enough at the rust point to say not worth the risk. So you're probably looking at chucking those uh, bad boys away and starting again, which is gonna be expensive. Um, my care regime is um, pretty much this. Um, bring them home, yeah, wash them in fresh water at the very first opportunity. Like if you're, if you're away at a location, wash them in fresh there. Then bring them home, wash them in fresh again. Um, really wanna look after them, take the split rings off and probably put the split rings in the bin. Split rings are cheap. Um, if you store them with the split rings on, you've got dissimilar metals happening there. And do not be surprised if you get rust on your eyes of your hooks no matter what you do. Um, if you ever find a popper washed up on the beach that's been in the salt water for a long time, like it, maybe it's been reefed um, and it ends up on the beach, you will find the split rings are still attached to the popper, the hooks are gone. Dissimilar metals, they rust away. Um, so yeah, my view, chuck the splitties away, they're cheap, get new ones. Um, my care regime then extends to um, soaking the um, hooks for days or weeks, whatever you um, want to do. Just set up like an ice cream container, put your hooks in and load it with whatever. Olive oil, coconut oil, WD-40, something. Um, coat them, protect them, and then uh, when they've been in there for, you know, when you get around to it, um, wipe them off and put them in storage. Um, 
I like to use uh, these kinds of things, Jessica gels. Jessica gels, I think they're called. They come with you know, all kinds of electrical items when you buy stuff. Um, yeah, Jessica silica gel, they're called. Um, shove it in with my hooks and um, they're meant to suck away the moisture. Um, it's worth a try. Um, one other thing on uh, split rings, um, there's heaps of split rings out there. Some are really prone to stretching, um, and you'll see it when you use your splitties to um, open them up to get over, you know, perhaps a big NT swivel or um, a big um, hook eye, that they never quite spring back the same. Um, been using fisherman split rings for quite a few years now, um, love them. Um, they've got a really chrome finish on them, um, really high gloss. Um, don't seem to rust, um, and they go up to 300 pounds, had no trouble with monsters on those. Um, I think that's it. Um, there might have been something I missed, but they're generally my thoughts around um, setting up your GT lures especially with um, your, your hooks and terminals. Um, I do go by the philosophy of I put the biggest hook on it that I can while still getting the um, the action that I want. You know, you don't want to kill that action, but you want to present a big strong hook to a GT because we all know what happens after you hook it. Um, you want to keep it tight and um, you don't want a hook to open. Um, small hooks are obviously not ideal for that. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments section. Um, contact us on Facebook, whatever you want to do. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Cheers, guys.